chat, YouTube, say hi to Twitch. Twitch, say hi to YouTube. You already know what time it is, right? If you're new to the stream, hit the follow button. And if you watch from YouTube, make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. It says a lot of you guys aren't subscribed that are watching the content. So make sure you subscribe because the numbers say some of you aren't. So, all right, here we go. This one is round four. So we looked at uh, round one, two, and three already. This is round four. So this one is called Jumping Off the Deep End. Bruh. Meaning finding the tallest building you can find and actually jumping off of it. We have an emote in the chat for that. Uh, this one is actually the... How many times have I played Martin Del Campo? Martin Del Campo, actually one of the greatest games I ever played was against this guy. Huh. All right, and because I like sacked the queen, sacked the rook, made it. And it was a C3 Sicilian game, by the way. So if you don't have the C3 Sicilian course, I actually covered that game against him with the white pieces um, in, in, the, in my C3, C3 Sicilian course. So this, by the way, guys, this is like, how many times have I played him? This is my fifth time playing him. Fifth time. So this time, I'm like, you know what? I just want to play something different, to be honest. And this is how I'm going into this game. Because I'm like, bro, this is my fifth time playing him. So after you play somebody so many times, it's like, I mean, you get used to it. And, and actually, my score is plus, right? So I have a uh, first time I beat him. Then we had two draws. And then I beat him again. And now this is our fifth game. So this is the fifth game, right? So fifth time playing him. So, okay, here we go. International Master, E4, I go C5. Knight F3, I go Knight C6. In this tournament, I played Knight Orf, And in the first round, I played the Dirty Harry, which is Knight C6. And then he goes Knight C3, which I know he's a fan of doing this weird move order. He doesn't go D4. He likes to hold it. So I go Knight F6, expecting D4. After D4, takes Knight takes D4. And then he goes Bishop B5. So now he's already throwing you off. Bruh. And this is the the annoying part because now it's like, it's like a Rasa Limo with Knight C3. All right, and I got many moves I can play here, but I don't really like these positions that much. And I was really hoping for him to play D4. So I can hit it with Pawn Takes, Knight Takes, and H5, right? So I know from transposition here though, in my files that I can play H5. So what I do, I play H5. I do it anyway. I do it anyway. Because there are many files that transpose into what I would like with D4. So I go H5. It goes H3, which is logical because there's a lot of Knight G4 jumps. I go A6. After A6, he takes. And then here we go, right? I take with the B pawn, which is fine. Which is fine. But D pawn is better. I didn't like taking with the D pawn. Okay, I can take with the D pawn. My Knight comes to D5. If E5, Knight D5. Now, this is very weird. Exactly. This is a weird line, right? This is a very weird line. And, and remind you, I wanted to have a game, right? I wanted to have a game. This is the fifth time I've played this guy. And so I'm like, bro, I'm tired of playing you in a way. Like, like bro, Bruh. come on, bro. I'm tired of playing you, number one. But number two is I wanted a game. I wanted a game. And this is my third black with him, I think. It was a two. Three whites, two blacks. Yeah, this was the second black. So this is the second time I've had black. With him in the, the the first time I won, and this is the second second game with Black. So after a6, he takes, I take with the B pawn. I want to keep the option of d5 open. And I looked at a line where he could play aggressive and play e5. So he does that. He plays e5. He's an aggressive player like me. I play knight d5. I'm going forward. He goes knight e4. He goes knight e4. And this is already really strange. I mean, really, really strange. And I sat here and thought for a minute. I sat and thought for a minute because I was like, I don't want to play D6 because this is not what I wanted to do. My pawn's on H5, but he made it weird now. I want to go Queen B6. Oh, sorry. I don't want to go E6. That's strange. All right. This is very strange. Yeah, I, I thought about G6 too and Bishop G7, but the pawn's hanging. And I don't want to give this up. I also thought about C4. So I'm like, I don't actually know. I don't actually know. So I'll play Queen B6 here. And this is already getting strange. Bruh. Already getting strange. All right. <laughs> Queen b6 is defending the pawn. So he castles. So look at his development. He castles. He gets out the way. Oh, this Ben Strange. Absolutely. 100%. So I go bishop b7. And this is getting bad right now. Because I'm trying to. I'm like, am I going to castle? What happens? He goes d3. Right? And then the best move here, which is actually losing. Already losing, but still the best move is a5. Oh, man. It's tough right now. A5. And why is a5 the best? Because I realized that his plan is bishop c4 and bishop e3. If I go move like e6, 
he's going to play c4. When I move the knight, he's going to go bishop e3. Actually, well, maybe this move might work. This move actually might work. It might be better than what I played, in fact. But the idea here, or even if I wanted to play like a g6, g6, c4 happens, you move the knight somewhere. Knight b4 actually traps the knight after a3, your knight's trapped. Like, yikes. Bruh. Not looking good out here. So, right, so you have to go back, and then bishop e3. And now he's developed, he's castle, he's hitting the pawn, and I have to go like 96. But then I saw after 96, if you're paying attention here, you ready for this? This is my calculation, is everything, b4. <laughs> And I noticed this in my calculations, that this is just a winning move. And if queen takes, rook b1. So I'm losing pieces. I'm losing material, obviously. So my whole idea was trying to figure out how do I deal with b4. So backtrack. I play a5. Strange move, but this is my intention. Is I saw b4 in that line. So he still goes c4. I go knight c7. And then at this point, right, what is that, uh... Dude, what's that thing? Uh, it was it was at this moment he knew he up uh, right. You know what I'm saying? Like he knew that, and, and, and I mean it was like a few moves before this. It felt like this, but nice c7. And when he when I as soon as like sometimes it's always hard to see it. Like when you make a move, and then you realize it after you move. It's always the worst, right? Bruh. It's always the worst. We've all been through this, right? You make the move, and then you realize. I didn't like that's not right. I'm gonna lose. So as soon as I play knight c7, I instantly see the move he can make, and he plays it. Knight takes c5. Bruh. It's a wrap. I'm already down a pawn, bro. This is terrible. So then the reason for this, I saw this. As soon as I move, I'm like he can take the pawn. But why? Because after queen takes bishop e3, and this is calculation 100. Like make sure your calculation is on point. Queen b4, right? The idea is the queen's trapped. After a3, queen takes, and you think rook b1 would work, but it actually doesn't. In fact, bishop d4 is the move that traps the queen. And I saw this in calculations. Literally, you have nowhere to go with the queen. Nowhere to go. In the sign, that's why knight takes c5 works. So you have to be calculating all the way here. And of course, I just went the wrong route here. Very wrong route. I should have taken with the d-pawn, which of course, that was my first hunch, but I should have went for this route anyway. Again, I wanted to have a game with uh, Martin after having this being our fifth time playing, I was kind of trying to be different here. So we know, obviously, lesson learned. But D takes C6 would have been better and gave me better shots and chances if E5 to go Knight to D5. Uh, we're going to put this on YouTube full smooth. So make sure you're on YouTube. You can catch the VOD there. So B takes C6. And here, and this is just problematic because he kept the pressure up. This was fine. This was correct. He literally just kept the pressure up. He played knight here. I had to do something. He castled. I had to develop d3. And I just noticed, oh, snap, c4, bishop e3, b4. And I'm already losing. a5, knight c7. He takes, and I'm like, bishop c8. This is gross here, right? Bruh. At this point, right, you know, I felt like I, I walked up to the tallest building I can find and jumped off of it, right? As uh, this is jumping off the DPM 101. Bishop c8, bishop e3, and queen to b8. At this point, right, all of my pieces are on the back rank. But I'm still, there are lots of tactics that still happen in this game that are unbelievable. After rookie one, I go knight a6, try to trade the pieces off, right? Try to trade. He goes knight e4, backs up, and then e6. And I start to feel like this isn't, I mean, this is terrible, but this isn't as bad. He goes c5, I go knight b4, because I'm just trying to make something happen. Put the knight on d5, right? Change that up. Um, let me actually. Fix that real quick. So it's not the number. Okay. Move that over here. Um, wasn't the knight stranded? Hanging there for a second. Yeah, the knight's hanging, Mark Marsky, but it, it, the if you take it, your queen was trapped from a nasty line with a bishop e3, queen b4, a3, queen takes bishop d4 was trapping the queen there. So we don't want that to happen at all. Alright, so knight before a3, knight d5, bishop d4. And at this point, I'm like, cool, I can develop. At least I can breathe a little bit. Bishop e7, I can breathe a little bit. Right. I can breathe a little bit, so we'll see. Uh, Vimo. You do never sense funny. Hey, buddy, coming to DreamCon in July. Oh, uh, I got tournament stand, buddy. I have two, actually, in fact. So I will not be there. Knight d2, and then here. I'm like, yo, you know, guys, I need counterplay, right? I'm going to try to make something happen. Where do I go? I go here, F5. Look, I don't care at this point. 
I don't care. And he opposite. He's got a rook file open, right? So he goes knight c4. I go king d8. I calculated all of this. Knight d6, king c7. Right. Uh, I'm playing in New York and, and Charlotte in July. And Charlotte. So king c7, he goes queen f3. Right. And at this point, I mean, this is ugly, but man, uh, this is rough. Road open. No, I won't be there. I wish I was a world, but I will be at Chicago. I mean, sorry, I'll be, um, actually, I have them right here. I'll be here in this one. This is the norm one, NYC chess norms, and Charlotte. So these two. Charlotte in New York, guys, in July. So you know what's going down. You already know. So this position, right, let's just get this over with because this was terrible. Rook G8, Knight B6. I'm like, oh my goodness, bro. Just This is just terrible. So I take, I mean, I go Bishop A6, hoping he takes the Rook. He goes Knight F5. I mean, this is just terrible. This is absolutely terrible. Bishop F8, Knight takes, takes, Knight E3. I go E5, hoping that I get something here, but it doesn't work. Knight takes d5, takes, and then he takes on f6, right? And at this point, this is this is just game over. He's threatening rook, queen, and may here. I have nothing else to do, so I just take the bishop. And then check, and then I resign here, because he has mate here, right? Because, I mean, this is just already over. But from the beginning of the game, this is really bad. So here, what you're supposed to do, what I know from theory is d6, e5, a6. You even have a knight d4, which is a strange one. Knight d4 happens as well, but e5. You're, you're running into trouble with this one. But d6 is played, and e, I think e5 you can play sometimes too. I think that just drops the pawn though, right? But you have the, uh, it's weird. It's weird. I don't like playing that one. But here, I just don't like this position for black. I don't like this position for black. Why don't you play knight e5 after knight c3? Because you, you, uh, after, well, here, you talk about here, here, e5, oh, right here. Yeah, you can play e5 right here. This is a move. Yeah, I have seen e5. And you have to know that after bishop c4, you have to play like bishop e7, knight f6 quickly. Because this square is like done for. You are not getting d5 ever. But it, I mean, you have d4. So like, it's the same thing. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, so I mean, it was a problematic line here, but of course, this one was called jumping off the deep end, finding the tallest building I can find, and jumping off of it Bruh. because this game was terrible, right? H5 was a uh, something that I've seen in files, but it works with D4, and he take. I mean, this is still playable. I just should have played with. I should have taken with the D pawn, and I knew this. But I've played him five times. I've beaten him twice, two draws, right? So here in this one, he just was. He came more prepared, and I got a bad position out the opening. And he got it. So this was round four, guys. So make sure you stick around. Of course, we're going to have round five tomorrow. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube, too. We'll see you, see you on the next video.